Have you ever wanted to change out your Fortnite character with something weird or crazy like this? Well, now you can. I'm gonna show you how to do it with UEFN. So open up the program and let's get started. I've created a brand new level you can do the same. Now what we're gonna do is bring in a custom character and play an animation and then change an animation based on whether they are running or not running. Some common things you might wanna do in a game. First things first is you need a character. I found this cool little Fall Guys character. Don't use this in your game, it's copyrighted. Uh, you can find any characters you want on Sketchfab. So make sure the model you pick is an FBX. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this 3D model created by Alexander M. And you wanna make sure that of course the model has animations. I looked at all the models beforehand to make sure they had run animations or walk animations. So you need to have them ready to go before you import these models, otherwise they won't animate. Here's the folder that I just downloaded and typically there's a source folder and somewhere in there is an FBX. In my program, I'm gonna create a new folder here called character. Go inside of that. I'm gonna drag the character Dot .fbx. Now here's some important things you need to understand. Yes, we want the skeletal mesh. Yes, we want to import the mesh itself. And then over here, we have animation, import animations. Some FBX models have them separated in different files. Some of them have them combined. You never really know until you import it. So we want to import animations because I only saw the one FBX file. Another really important thing that you should know about is right here, convert scene. Sometimes the models are not built in a way that Unreal Engine supports, so it tries to convert the scene. Sometimes it works great, and sometimes it doesn't. If it does not work great, turn off convert scene. Lastly, this is also very important, import uniform scale. Sometimes the models are just too small. The person was working in a 3D program and their whole entire environment was very tiny compared to the units that we're using here. And sometimes they won't even convert or scale automatically. So if your models come in super tiny, which is the case of our fat little pink fall guy dude, comes in very tiny, you wanna make sure that you scale it up to a size that looks right at 10. Make it 10 times bigger than it actually is. And import all. And here we go. What we're looking for is a skeletal mesh. If it did not import a skeletal mesh, you're not gonna be able to use that asset, just delete it. And we're not gonna go into how to actually fix that and make that work. It's out of the scope of UEFN. Make sure it has a skeletal mesh. And see how tiny this little thing is, even though we imported it at a scale of 10. It's very, very tiny here, and we're gonna have to fix that uh, even more so. So as you can see, you make it bigger and bigger on import until you get it the right size, or you can do it here uh, in the editor in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just zoom in here on this little feller. I'm gonna grab this material here and I'm gonna open it. Okay, we need to set materials for our character, but we don't have them yet, right? So we go back to our folder here, right click, and I'm gonna create a new folder called textures. Sometimes you want to make a new folder because you get a lot of textures. So I'm going to go back to our folder here, textures, and I'm going to drag these four things in here. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, and they are now dragged into the project. Now I'll grab that material that we just opened up here. I'm going to delete the texture that's currently on it, and I'm going to grab this pink texture here and drag it to base color and click apply. Now this looks pretty good, but I want it to be a little more plastic looking to look like the Fall Guys game. So what I'm gonna do is right click on here and type in constant. And in here I'm gonna put 0 0.2 and drag this over to roughness. 0 0.2 is a good plastic looking material. Apply and save. Now we got a little bit more of a shine on there, a little plastic dude. Now this other pink thing here is a normal map. I'm not gonna put it on this model because I don't want any bumps on the model. I think it looks fine as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. Now you'll notice that this thing has a tail. I don't like the tail, I think it looks stupid. So what I'm gonna do is go into this tail material and I'm going to click this thing right here, this material node. And for blend mode, I'm gonna change it from opaque to translucent, right click for a constant and set opacity to zero. I just don't wanna look at that ugly tail. I don't 
whatever, right? So there's our little guy, he's looking pretty good, but he is way too small. So we're gonna fix that now. What I'm gonna do is here in my top level folder, I'm gonna right click and go to Blueprint Class. This is how you interact with props in UEFN or Fortnite. Select Building Prop. And we're gonna call this Fall Guy BP. Double click it. What we're going to do is add a skeletal mesh, like so. Then we're gonna grab the skeletal mesh asset, like so. As you can see, it's very, very tiny. So what I'm going to do is on the skeletal mesh itself is I'm gonna scale it up. See the scale here, let's make sure the lock is on and I'm just gonna say 10 to get started. So he's way up here now. And this is a problem. And the reason why I picked this model is because it has problems and you're gonna run into problems. The pivot is way too low here. Now, what an artist should do is go fix this in the modeling program. But we're not an artist, right? We're a programmer. And so we're just gonna fix it here. Keep in mind, this blueprint is a prop and it has its own coordinate system. The skeletal mesh has its own coordinate system inside of the parent. So it's completely fine if we just drag this skeleton down here until it looks about right. Compile and save. Move this out of the way here. I'm gonna delete this tiny one and we're gonna drag in the blueprint now. Okay, as you can see that he's in the ground halfway. Even though if I look at the blueprint here, the Z is zero, right? So it's, it's at flat line, but it's under the ground. And that's because our skeleton still needs to be adjusted. So you can adjust it directly in the blueprint now, okay? So what I'm going to do is now click that skeletal mesh and just move it up. I'm gonna turn off my snapping grid. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm just gonna adjust it until his feet are right there on the ground, okay? Remember, that's the skeletal mesh inside of the blueprint. When I move the blueprint prop itself, it will use a different coordinate system, but the skeletal mesh will still stay where it's supposed to within this coordinate system, okay? And I'm gonna close out of this. So we've got this nice looking character here. Let's move it on to our guy. It's a little bit big because I know our camera is gonna take up a lot of space. And so I'm gonna make the scale a little bit smaller on the skeletal mesh. So right now I said 10, let's try eight. Okay, and notice now that it's eight, the pivot's off again. So we're gonna have to adjust it here in the skeletal mesh. So let's take a look at that. I still think eight's too big. I'm gonna try 6.5. And I think we're gonna roll with this for right now. Now, how do we get it to animate? Well, we can animate it straight from the blueprint itself. We can select the skeletal mesh, anim to play, and I can say run, for instance and he's going to run. Now, the reason why it's freezing is because the artist didn't set the correct frames on the export on the animation, and so it plays to 60, and then it keeps on going, which we're gonna have to fix in just a little bit. But we can also choose idle as well. Again, this model has problems, and you are going to run into problems, which is why I picked it here. So the idle seems to be looping just fine, okay? So we're gonna compile and save, and just leave it on the idle for now. Okay, now if I run the game, little dude here is going to start idling, but that's completely pointless. How do we get him to match the character and animate and all those types of things? So first things first is, let's go ahead and set up our animations with level sequences. Right click, cinematics, level sequence. And we'll call this FG for Fall Guy, and we're gonna call this Run Anim, all right? And we're gonna double click it, and what we're going to do is click Track, Actor to Sequence, the Fall Guy blueprint that we dragged into our scene, okay? And we're gonna select it. Because it has a skeletal mesh on it, I can track the animation. So track, animation, and let's type in run. Excellent. So let's drag the timeline. He's running and then, oh no, he stops. Why? Because the animator screwed up on this, but that's okay. That's okay, he gave us a free model. Uh, no harm, no foul, right? So we could fix this in the animation itself or we could just fix it here in this blueprint and see how it kind of just stops. There's a point when it stops at a frame. So it's stopping here at this frame right here, okay? So what I wanna do 
is take this red line and just drag it to where we are right now. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna drag the end of this to that line, like so. The idea is that we're just going to repeat this over and over and we may have to fiddle with it, okay? We had to make some changes because the animator kind of messed up. And we're gonna save this sequencer. Now we're gonna do one for idle. Right click, cinematics, level sequence, FG, idle, anim, track, actor to sequencer, fall guy blueprint, track, animation, idle, idle A. Okay, and on this one, we're also gonna drag the red line to the end. But notice how this animation doesn't go run a thousand frames. Okay, it ends as it's supposed to. And we're gonna zoom in here and try and get that red line right where it belongs at the end here. Beautiful. Now, to play the animations, we need cinematic sequence devices. We're gonna go to devices, type in cinema, cinematic sequence device, one for idle, one for run. I'm going to rename these F2, so we'll say cine run anim and we'll say cine idle anim. And for the idle, on the level sequence, click the idle. And then for the run animation, let's go ahead and click the run. Okay, on each of these, we want to select loop playback. We want it to run over and over. And we're gonna save this project. Now we need some new code. So verse, verse explorer to open up verse. We're gonna say content, create new verse file. I'm gonna call this FG game for a fall guy. Click the big V verse button and select your FG underscore game here. What we're going to do is run a loop that continuously puts the character where the player is supposed to be, all right? So how do we do that? First, let's just get our player, all players, colon equals get play space dot get players. Then we're gonna say if player colon equals all players zero, so grab the first player. We need to cast it to an agent in order to get the actual Fortnite character. So we're gonna say agent, we're gonna cast it, convert it into an agent, and then we can grab the actual character itself fort colon equals agent dot get fort character with square braces. And we just need to do one import here at the top. It's going to be fortnite.com slash characters. Now we have access to the first player's character. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to hide it. <laughs> fort dot hide. It's that simple to make your character disappear or all the characters in your game. Okay. So if you want a game that hides everybody or specific people, that's how you do it with one line of code, two lines of code. Okay, so after we hide it, what do we wanna do? Well, I wanna start playing the idle animation. So let's go ahead and add our, um, our cinematic devices here. So run anim, and then the last thing we're gonna need to do here is actually grab our character itself, equals creative prop. Then under fort.hide, we will say idle anim dot play, and we're gonna pass in the agent that we converted from the player, which we got from the game itself. Excellent. Now, what do we want to do? Whenever we're running, let's play the run animation, and whenever we're not running, let's play the idle animation. So that's not that hard to do, actually. And so what we're going to do is right here under idleanim.play, we're gonna say fort, grab our fort variable, dot sprinted event, okay, that's built in, dot subscribe, and it's looking for a function that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna create a function here called onMoved, like so. And it's yelling at us because we haven't actually created the function yet. So here in our code, onMoved, it's gonna give us some move data, like so. It's gonna be a tuple with a fort character and a Boolean or logic in here, okay? We'll say void equals because we're not going to return anything. And then literally all we're going to do is uh, what I just said. If we're running, do one thing. If we're not running, do another thing, okay? So first things first is let's grab the agent from the character. So we're going to say if, say agent colon equals move data zero dot get agent. 
square braces. So remember, it's giving us a Fortnite character in a tuple. And so to access the first element in a tuple, you put zero inside of parentheses and we can actually get the agent from a Fortnite character. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the character and grabbing the agent. And then I'm going to say, if move data one this time, remember one right here. So slot number one, zero, then one. So if move data one, question mark. So basically, hey, are we running? All right, do what? I'm gonna put a block here so I can explain it. So if I go here to my uh, sprinted event and control click it, check it out. This is what Epic Games wrote, okay? Uh, one. So this is the logic. True if the character is sprinting, false if the character stopped sprinting. So whether they stopped or whether they started sprinting. And actually it's not sprinting at all, not the, the Fortnite sprinting, it's actually just walking and moving. So that's very confusing, I know. It's not the actual sprint when you hold down the shift key or whatever key it is on a controller. Okay, so fort.sprinted event. Okay, so in this case here, we are sprinting. So we're gonna say idle anim dot stop. So we're gonna stop the idle animation. We're gonna say run anim dot play. We're gonna say agent else. We're gonna say run anim dot stop and idle anim dot play. We need to stop the, uh, we need to stop the, um, Previous, an previous animation, otherwise it'll both play them both at the same time and there'll be conflicts. So we're gonna stop one and then play the other. So whenever we're sprinting, it's gonna automatically call on move for us or whenever we stop sprinting, it's gonna automatically call it. One more thing we need to do is just make sure that the character is always in the exact same spot as the player. A new function here or method called update character and uh, we'll pass in a Fortnite character, I'll just call it player. So fort character and um, yeah, I think that'll be good there. And let's uh, say suspends void equals. We're gonna say suspends because we're gonna do a loop that goes permanently, okay? Every single frame that we can. We're gonna say loop, and then we're gonna say sleep 0.0. .0. This is going to run uh, the fastest update possible, which right now at time of recording is about 30 ticks per second. And uh, an Epic employee actually says that's a bug and they hope it goes up faster soon, uh, which will mean our animation will look ni nicer later on. But for right now, about 30 ticks per second. Uh, you have to have the sleep keyword here, otherwise the loop will freeze your game and destroy it and it'll crash. So yeah, make sure you put sleep in there. Now what we wanna do is we simply wanna teleport the character object to the exact same position and rotation as the player. And we can do that with one line of code. If fg car dot teleport to square braces and we're going to say player dot get transform dot translation so that's the position and we're going to say player dot get transform dot rotation like so and then we're going to put some curly braces there get transform uh, and if it fails, it won't do anything. And if it succeeds, it'll just teleport the character to the exact same spot that we are. And so the last thing we need to do is just make sure we call that function, okay? So here we go. We're going to say right here, spawn, and we're gonna say update character, and we're gonna pass in uh, the Fortnite character that we got right up here. Spawn, what that's gonna do is it's gonna send it off on its own thread so it doesn't lock up any of the code in here if we wrote any afterwards, okay? That's what's happening here. So I'm saving that. Go back to my code, verse, build verse code, go to my creative devices, and I'm gonna look for the thing I just created called FG game. You're gonna see it's looking for some things here. Idle animation, idle animation, run animation, run animation, and the character itself right here. We're gonna save it and push changes, and here we go. So I'm moving around and it looks good. Now, you'll notice it's kind of jittery, and again, that's because we have 30 ticks per second. Other game engines are like 50 or 60, and so that's why it's a little bit glitchy here. In the future, this should fix itself when they make the bug fix for it, and uh, that's pretty cool. You can make big objects, small objects. You can do anything you want with this. Let me know what else you want me to teach. Subscribe.